I want to share with you all the way I've been doing casual run-throughs of Fire Emblem Binding Blade. This game can be obtuse on a first playthrough, but it's one of the best FEA games for Iron Man runs. Probably up there with Shadow Dragon for the DS. But unlike Shadow Dragon, this game has class-specific promotion items, so promo item contention is a big factor in which units you're going to choose. I've written a special randomizer for this game. Instead of changing units or classes, all it does is shuffle around the chest and villager orgs throughout the game and randomize the promo items and the stat boosters. Except the angelic robe. Elvin's gonna need that or he'll get shot by an arrow. It starts out like a lot of my playthroughs. Forrest gets bored and decides to pretend he's Oswin. Chad gets in some exercise by picking Lulu up over and over. Also, Marcus thinks he's got alabaster duty, and Roy's taking all the stats like Buddy the Elf taking pamphlets in New York City. Chapter 6 and its flood of three and treasures where things start to get interesting. With our first hero crest, a B-ranked status staff, B-rank status staff. The next chapter is apparently spring cleaning season in Ostia and the citizens have a bunch of old jewelry they don't need anymore. Red gin. White gin. Another white gin. Let's me buy as many steel bows as I want. I, I want two steel bows. Another B-rank staff. Wow. On the promo item front, nothing will convince me to train Shanna, but I do promote Deke, and I'm probably justified in doing so. Normal Mode Wrecker is probably getting that one, since I dropped my Axe Fighters a lot earlier than usual this time. Chapter 8 gives me... I guess I'll give that to Thea? Marcus gets to use that Chapter 2 Killer Axe now, and I decide to give Barth a level in case I ever get a Nightcrest surplus. Speaking of, I've got pretty good land, so he's getting that. To be fair to Shanna, Pegasus Knights can be pretty useful even without training. I ever send Rutger on a needlessly dangerous trip to the store. He's alright, but Noah is... well... I didn't have a night crest for him anyway. I get a new killing edge to replace the one that... Like, do people just leave those old swords laying on the ground? No one wants them? I do manage to save some villagers though, and start to change my mind about Shanna maybe just a little? Meanwhile, Lena is doing FE6 things as usual, but still no guiding rings in sight, so she's going to have to find her own way forward in the world. Barter Route Chapter 10 brings a load of promotion items if you can get through it well enough. I bring along a hero crest for Rutger to use if he gets to level 10, but turns out they got more where that came from. So this one is going to level 11 Gonzalez. Along with as many axes as a graph in a Coculus 3 textbook. I have the easiest climb recruitment I've ever had, but I am afraid of the pig knights, so I talk to them with Shanna even though it gives the generics a death wish. This one can't be safe, but I do get all the archers. Oh, and some lances. My reward for the chapter is hero crest number 4 and the universe trying to give me a sign. The great thing about a run like this is the random distribution of promotion items as well as the kind of weapons and stabs you get help encourage you to make decisions that otherwise you never would have made. Decisions like convincing me to deploy two Pegasus Knights on the chapter 11 with the Ballista. It gives each run a different flavor without really altering the units as you come to know them. If you'd like to try a run like this for yourself, I'll put a link in the description to my GitHub page, where you can download a .NET Windows app that can apply these randomizations to a ROM image or create an IPS patch.